This is video 21 now from digital-university.org where we're trying to develop different techniques for analyzing electrical circuits and here in this problem we're looking at a circuit that has multiple current sources and we want to figure out what is the current flowing through these three resistors here. So we set the problem up just as we've done in the previous videos, we consider three different components to the circuit and then each one of these components we draw out a clockwise mesh current. I1, I2, and I3 and the proviso here is that these mesh currents may not have clockwise directions and that will manifest itself later that when we determine a numerical value for a particular mesh current, if we get a negative sign, then we know that we chose the wrong direction and we have to go back and correct it later on. Okay, and also now for this problem, here, mesh current I1, that's 6 amps. And here for mesh current I3, that's 8 amps. Now, what we do is to try to figure out the current for the entire circuit, remove the current sources and see what kind of super mesh current we can draw afterwards. So that's what we have right here. This is eliminated and this is eliminated and once that's done you see that the only mesh current that remains is this one. So this becomes the super mesh current. So we can write down the equation using the format approach like we did in the previous videos. And that's going to be I2 times 8 plus 2 is 10, 16 times I2. Now, again, we consider flowing through this resistor is I1, so we have minus 2 times I1, and I2 flows through this resistor, the 8 ohm resistor downward. Current I3 is going upward, so we subtract minus 8 I3. There are no voltage sources here, so that's set equal to 0. So here we have minus 2I1 plus 16 times I2 minus 8 times I3 equals 0. And let's divide through by negative 2. So we have I1 minus 8 times I2 plus 4 times I3 equals 0. So this is our mesh current equation. And again, we know I1 is 6 amps and I3 is 8 amps. So all we have to solve for is I2. So I1 is 6, so we have 6 minus 8 times I2 plus 4 times I3, that's 4 times 8, that's 32. And that equals 0. So here we have 32 plus 32 plus 6 is 38. Bring it on this side. And we have minus 8 I2. So I2, current I2 is going to be equal to 38 divided by 8. These two, of course, cancel each other. So 
Here is I2, 38 over 8, um, times 4 is 32, so that would be, with 6 eighths, that's 4.75. So we know I2 equals 4.75 amps. So let's go to here, to our original circuit. I1 is 6 amps. I2 is 4.75 amps. I3, 8 amps. Okay, so let's see. For this resistor, we have 6 amps going down from I1 and 4.75 amps going up for I2. So through that resistor then, that's 1.25 amps going through it and that's going down. So we know what is going through that resistor right here. Now for this resistor the only current going through it is I2 so that's 4.75 amps in that direction and now for this resistor Here we have 4.75 from current I2, that's going down. Here we have 8 amps from current I3, that's flowing up. So we have 8 minus 4.75, that's 3.25 amps. And that's flowing upward. So here for this resistor, 1.25 amps going down for this resistor 4.75 amps going that way and for this resistor 3.25 amps going in that direction and that's it then for this circuit um, okay hope that was helpful to you um, what we're going to do in some future videos now is consider the node analysis technique and how we can use that to solve different types of circuit problems. So come back, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.